Hey everyone, this is Curve Knight, bringing you another deck profile. It's been a year, so let's go ahead and take a look at Wallista once again. It's kind of hard to believe that it was only a year ago when Willista Gandiva format was were the two top dogs of the meta, and um, so much so that they actually got hit on our restriction list. But uh, the restrictions have been lifted, at least for Willista. Uh, so we can definitely play Willista yet again, almost at full power. Of course, the meta has changed and developed a lot through that point, but I still do think that Willista is a fairly solid deck. You can definitely take this to your locals and uh, get pretty high placings, if not first place, if you know what you're doing. It is definitely a solid B tier deck. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop straight into the deck profile. All right, so as usual, we are gonna start off with the ride line. And of course, what else is there to play in Willista? But of course, the Willista ride line, probably the best lyrical uh, ride line that we have access to right now. You've probably seen this in pretty much every other deck profile that is lyrical. Uh, so I won't spend too much time on them. So let's just go over them very quickly. So of course your grade zero starter doesn't actually matter what it is. There is no, um, no, no reason to actually play that other than, you know, just the consistency. And then of course, when you ride over the grade one Willista, you put a card from your hand to soul, search up for a gem card, or in any case, always crossing Illumerase add it to your hand and then of course um the grade two willista whenever you play a gem card you get to draw an additional card so when you play that crossing loom race you're always going to be drawing two cards and willista is going to be getting another 5k she's going to be at 15k because of the crossing loom race um now as for the willista herself uh, it has been a while since we've taken a look at her so let's go ahead and read some of her effects so when she is placed on ban you can discard a card from your hand in order to add a gem card from either your soul or drop to your hand um you sometimes use that skill although with the addition of a brand new card from the newest lyrical set we don't realistically need to do that very often but of course the most important skill of willista is that act once per turn you can soul blast a gem card and then you perform the following according to which you soul blasted. Of course, you are going to be soul blasting the crossing loom rays, which counts as both, so you'll be activating both of these effects. So we'll start off with True Hearted Ruby, even though it is the second one. Um, you do get an extra 15k to this unit until the end of turn, so she's going to be standing at a 28k base, 33 once you play the gem once again for turn. And then, of course, the other effect is you check the top five cards of the deck, choose up the two unit cards from among them, call them to rear guards, and then shuffle the rest back into the deck so Melissa definitely is still as strong as it ever has been just being able to have so much draw power big numbers and that deck filtering the fact that we have gotten so many more amazing regards in lyrical um, kind of just boosts this deck to almost its former glory so, of course, getting into the main deck, we are playing the three copies of Persona Ride. Very important to have Persona Ride, and you do have ways to search it, because since you are a lyrical deck, you do have ways of bouncing your rear arts back to your hand. So you can definitely call this off of a plethora of different effects, and then, of course, just use a card effect to bounce it back to your hand. We also have ways of recurring this from the drop zone. So if we, say, need to put into soul for the cost of grade one Willista, it definitely does not feel bad, as long as we're able Able to soul blast it out we can actually fetch the person rides back from the drop zone now um, and then of course just finishing off the grade threes who else but ophelia our best attacker um, has been a while for her so we'll go ahead and go over her so at the end of the battle that your grade three will list the attacked you perform all the according to, uh, depending on which gem you either played or soul blast this turn it is one or the other you don't technically have to do both uh, it just does you just get the effects because um, you're always going to be soul blasting out the gem or playing it so this is always going to be live so at the end of the battle this gets another 15k and um, you can also counter last one and bot deck your back row center rear guard and shuffle the deck to stand this unit. So of course this is probably your best attacker even into the late game because it, even if you don't have enough CB to restand it, it still is gonna be getting that extra uh, 15K power. So it is a 28K base, um, but this is one of your multi-attack options. Uh, still definitely just as strong as it was back in set 10. 
All right, moving on into the grade twos, we probably have the best addition to every single lyrical deck. Of course, that is uh, four copies of the Franchant, also known as, you know, grade two Yuika. So she does have this other effect that is active when she is chosen by Chris Rain's ability. Um, but her main effect, I guess we can kind of go over the eroded effect, um, which effectively does the same thing. But it's when this unit attacks, you basically choose up to any, you choose any number of your rear guards, and then if you chose three or more and they all have different names, it gets 5k power. Then if you chose four or more units with different names at the end of that battle, you can return one of your other rear guards to the hand. So now French Chat is um, effectively doing a lot of the same work that Yuika did, but just better in every single way. Um, Yuika had to boost the thing in order to bounce it. This one does not. This can boost anything. Uh, and a th quick thing to note for French Chat is that um, the plus 5k is until end of turn. So if you were to say, um, re-stand her and then swing again, she would get another 5k from that effect. And assuming you still have four different names that you can choose, you can still bounce yet another card. So what you can do a lot of the time is um, swing with the Ophelia boosted. You can swing with French Chat. French Chat will bounce back the booster to your hand. And then you're gonna re be re-standing both of these. Um, and then you can swing with the Ophelia, swing with the French Chat, and bounce the Ophelia back to your hand. So definitely we have a lot more uh, ability to kind of just retain resources, which is one of the main ways we're able to keep up with all the current decks in the meta. All right, moving on from French Chat, we do have yet another new card for Willista. Um, definitely another expensive lyrical generic that of course being the strega um so this card is basically your lyrical tape fault uh, when it's placed on rear other than by unit cards ability you do need to remember that because you do actually have a few ways to call this out of the deck with a lyrical ability um such as other copies of strega or um you know willissa herself you can't proc this if that happens but if you play the normal or this turn which you're going to be doing every single turn uh you soul blast one check top five call one with a uh, grade lesser equal to your vanguard or add an order card that meets those same conditions um and then of course when you when this attacks grade through a grade unit if it was placed this turn you can cb1 draw a card and it gets 10k so you're mostly never going to be using that uh second skill just because all of your CB in this deck is kind of reserved for your multi-attacks. Um, but, you know, just having the ability to dig further into your deck is very nice. Um, depending on how your opening hand is, you might or might not have that extra soul, so you don't feel compelled to actually use Strega every single turn. She's a very nice turn to play if you see her, but if you don't, it's definitely not the end of the world. It just enables you to get like a lot of early game pressure. Um, something that's really good is to go uh, Strega into Call of Franchet. Uh, Franchette, bounce back the strike, and then assuming you have enough soul, you can do that again, and then you can actually swing with it, counter blast one, draw a card, and get 10k if you really need it. But definitely Strega um, is probably like maybe the first thing to cut, but she is definitely a very solid card. If you wanted to cut um, Strega, she doesn't contribute as much to the deck, but honestly, she's just a very solid rear guard. Right, so finishing off our grade two units, we of course have the newly unbanned. What color is your wish? As I call her, Valdebrash. Um, so she is the Soul Blast Cycler, which I guess we can call them now. Uh, so when she's discarded here from your hand during the ride phase, you can Soul Blast one and bot deck her in order to draw a card. Uh, do note that we do have an effect that discards during the ride phase, which is Willista's on place effect. So you can actually proc this um, skill off of that effect which, you know, is always very good. Uh, and then, of course, your other skill, if you Persona Ride, you can CB1, and then choose your Vanguard. It gets the Kant skill that all your front row units gain another 5k. So basically, add another 5k to your Persona Rides. Uh, sometimes it comes up if you have the extra Counter Blast. Um, a lot of the times, we're not using this as much, but it is definitely great um, for push, and it lets you keep that really good hand in the early game, which is super necessary in this current format. Um, the one thing I will say is that she does, she is the main soul usage in this deck outside of Strega. Um, so you're probably not, you don't really have that much soul in this deck. So you're just going to be using the soul for Strega and Valdebrashes. All right, and then just finishing off the grade twos, another new card from set three is of course the protection twin cast a very good probably the best blitz order that we have at the moment um so of course this is just a 10k shield uh but i think the important thing to know is that it is grade two which makes it that much better than evergreen transfer which uh, i did consider playing in the deck a little bit after the ban list but this card being grade two is makes it so much more 
playable. Uh, it is only 10k instead of the 25k, but of course it shines in that second ability where um, you can actually remove this from the drop in order to um, choose one of your units that's being attacked, and it gets plus 5k for each grade of that unit that's being attacked. So most of the time you're going to be using this on your Vanguard uh, past turn 3, so you get a free 15k shield from the drop zone, um, which is pretty great. Like, honestly, this is... Um, just like an overall solid card, I think you should always try and fit this in if you don't have a Regalius piece like committed to your deck already. All right, moving on into the grade ones, we are going to be starting off with a brand new card and probably one of the best cards in the deck now. Of course, this is the new card from uh, DZ Set 1 for Lyrical. Uh, this is, what's her name? Lupart? Sure. Um, but anyways, this is... <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead and go over so, so she's a cont if your opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater and you play the gem or this turn it is a 13k uh, booster or attacker um so in case you do desperately need an attacker this is going to be hitting 13 which is going to be hitting any uh grade three vanguard well most of them anyway um and then the more important skill is that at the end of the battle uh, or not even at the end of the battle, at the end of the turn if you have a willista vanguard you can e3 and retire her to choose a grade three card with willistan's card name or a gem card from your drop and put it into your hand. So one of the main reasons why this card is absolutely insane is that it fixes one of the biggest problems that Willista had, which was that it needed to consistently see Persona Rides or draw into gem orders, um, which is, you know, if you draw Persona Ride, you can get the gem order just by discarding a card, um, which was, you know, your best scenario. Uh, and you had ways you playing things like Yuika to bounce back your Persona Rides. But this kind of circumnavigates all of that because if you're missing Persona Ride and you happen to have one in your drop, okay, add it back. If you don't, if you already have Persona Ride and you just want a gem so you don't have to discard on the Persona Ride, okay, retire this, add the gem back. But like the, the amount of work that this one unit does for the deck is absolutely insane. She almost single-handedly revives the deck. Okay, moving on into the rest of the grade ones. Of course, we do have, once again, also off the restriction list, uh, we have Elevir, no longer choice restricted with the Valdebras. She is a very classic uh, card. Of course, whenever you play the Everlasting Sapphire, if your Vanguard is the grade three Willista specifically. Um, so if you call her on grade two turn and you play the gem order, you're not gonna draw a card. You have to wait till turn three. Uh, you just draw an extra card. So normally you just draw one card for each copy of Elevira you have on board. You're drawing an additional card. So you can draw upwards of two to three cards just for playing your gem order, which is just, you know, very good. Um, and of course this deck does kind of need boosters. We got a lot of good solid attackers, uh, but having some boosters definitely does help you um, increase your numbers so that you're they're that much more scary. All right, and then of course, just finishing off the grade ones, a little bit of a change from how we used to be playing uh, Willista. Only gonna be playing three copies of the Crossing Illumerays. Um, I did cut one to slot in the uh, Twin cast, which I think is definitely uh, solid. Like I said, the biggest problem with Alyssa before was you had to see um, your gem orders, preferably like a second copy, so that you could have a really good turn three. Uh, but now with this card, we really don't need to worry about that. You're always gonna see one copy because you're gonna be searching it out. Um, and then you can just recycle that if you really need to with, um, with what's her name uh and uh i think that just at three is definitely fine you could bump this up to the four if you're really scared but in all of my testing it's never really come up like sometimes i don't draw into it but i feel like it would have been this card this would have been a crossing loom rays, but i'm always happy to see this card um because it's at least shield value whereas crossing loom rays is not i'm also realizing that i kind of forgot to um explain crossing loom rays. Uh, hopefully most of you know it at this point because this card is just so ubiquitous with uh, Lyrical Monasterio, but I'll just go over it really quickly. So it's treated as Ruby and Sapphire um, for a lot of effects, which, you know, that's why you can use both Ballistas just by Soul Blasting uh, this. So you play it if you have Ballista, you draw a card, put it to Soul, and give your Vanguard an extra 5k. Then if your opponent's Vanguard is grade 3 or greater, um, you give your Willista the skill that when it attacks, you can CB1, Soul Blast, a grade 3 Willista in its card name to choose one of your regards and stand it. Now, of course, you can't actually play any more orders, which doesn't really matter for this deck. All right, so moving on, let's go ahead and get some of the typical stuff. We are going to be playing, of course, four PGs. Um, I'm opting to not play the Elementaria for the same reason we didn't play Elementaria. 
Elementaria in Melissa last year, which is that you can call a lot of things to your board, uh, you've got Striga, you've got Willista, they all call units on board. If this, if you happen to see this off of your top five, um, and this is an Elementaria, you can't call it. Um, but if it is just a regular PG, you can call it and then bounce it back to your hand with Frenchette, which um, definitely I think is still the correct play. Like there is a lot, there are a lot scarier decks now. Like there is Drag Strider that is running around and theoretically you do need Elementaria to survive that. Um, but, you know, in theory, Melissa does bulk up very, very much, so you could maybe hard guard a Drag Strider, although you probably wouldn't want to because that is a very risky thing to do. Uh, but anyways, if you want to play the Elementaria, go ahead and go for it. It comes up, like, every now and again, but, uh, you know, it's just up to player preference at this point. All right, so just finishing off with the... Um, triggers we are just playing the four copies of vanilla crit playing another four copies of vanilla crit um you could play the soul in crits because you sometimes do have soul issues but i find myself not really needing them i don't really call triggers that often and um when you do you're usually like putting them back to the deck so i'd always rather just have a 5k boost than um and make a better number than you know settle for just having you know a 4k with a potential soul in um of course we are playing still three fronts fronts just make your uh your attacks hit that much harder and they are also you know very big already so having those front triggers makes them hit that much harder of course playing the four heals you could technically recycle them with ophelia but i almost never do that because i feel like losing that shield value is not worth having a chance at hitting a heal trigger and of course we are still just playing blue ot same as it was last year. Uh, you just want more crits. Adding back cards is always good, um, especially in this deck. So, um, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and just finish off the video with a quick little test hand. So now, of course, uh, what we are kind of looking for in the opening hand is we definitely want to see Persona Rides. This card is solid, um, so I think we might keep that. Elevator we technically don't need in the early game. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back. It is kind of a turn three card, but you know, if you wanted to keep any Eleveras, that is definitely totally fine. So um, off the top, we do see the Frenchette, the Twin Cast, as well as, you know, a Front Trigger, which is, you know, definitely nice. We got some Shield. Frenchette is always a solid card. And of course, Twin Cast, you know, that would have been a Crossing Illuminaries, but in this case, it doesn't, re it's not really going to matter as we're going to go ahead and see. So let's go ahead and stand up, draw for turn. Uh, we draw into a struggle, which is very good. Another good thing about Twin Cast is it makes very good discard fodder because you can always discard it. Just make sure you don't forget that it is in the drop zone. So our opponent's going to attack. Theoretically, we'd take this because we don't really need a counter blast uh, for our first turn, but let's go ahead and take it for now. Uh, it looks like we drew into the second crossing Illuminaries. Um, so what I think we're going to do here is we are going to have to give up the two cards. So what I think we might do is this feels kind of bad, but let's go ahead and discard our front trigger to ride up into the grade two. We would really like to have that. We're going to go ahead and um, tuck the um, Lista. And I think actually instead of discarding this, we'll probably just discard the grade one here. Um, it's just that much better. So we'll go ahead and search out another copy of Crossing Loom Raids, our second copy. So we still do have one in deck. Uh, hopefully we can get another one of these in order to, you know, circulate them a little bit more. Uh, we don't really have too much that we want to be like aggressing with here. We're gonna go ahead and play the Crossing Illuminaries there and then draw two more cards. Uh, looks like we do see an, uh, an Elevira as well as an Feely. So we're looking pretty good right now. I'm gonna play an R, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and commit the Strega here. What we're kind of looking for in this instance is maybe something that we can bounce off of the Franchette or another copy of that grade one that we did discard. Um, so we are actually gonna see a Franchette herself. Um, so I think we're just gonna go ahead and call that. If I didn't have the gem, I would probably just add that to my hand um, because you can add it off of Strega skill. Another reason why I feel definitely comfortable playing it at lower copies because there is another mode of searching it, that of course being the Strega. So now we've got pretty solid columns here. We've got a uh, 
15, a 15, and a 8, and a 10. So assuming we're going first, what we can do is we can actually commit the uh, of Elevira here, and we can go ahead and swing Van first. Of course, in case we're going to hit front trigger, we're going to hit a crit. Our opponent is at grade, uh, what's that, grade 1 right now. So we give crit to Van, power to Franchette so that she hits over a, a single defensive. Um, in that case, we're going to go ahead and swing the Elevira uh, column. Swing hit 18, and then we can swing Frenchette, who is now at 14, and then we can choose a card and add it back to our hand. So since we haven't used that much soul, I'm going to go ahead and bounce the strike, uh, assuming we're not against any sort of like retire matchup. Um, we're going to go ahead and maybe take, just take one more damage here, um, and then we can go ahead and guard another one in case they just want to swing in Addison. We're going to go ahead and stand and draw here. We draw into yet another Persona Ride, so things are looking absolutely great. Uh, we do have to discard a card. I'm thinking I might just discard this Franchette because we realistically uh, already have one on board, assuming they didn't retire this. So we're going to ride. We do already have the Crossing Illuminates in our hand that we drew into, so we don't need to use Willista's skill. Instead, we're just going to go ahead and shotgun the Willista uh, skill here, checking the top five cards of the deck, and we're going to get some pretty good cards here. Of course, first we're going to call this, and then we're going to call this, because those are both very solid. We could additionally also call this PG here, and then, you know, bounce it back to our hand with the Frenchette skill. But, you know, this is still a very solid play here. We're going to be able to um, do four attacks, and then, of course, draw a couple of cards and bounce back a lot of our key pieces. So now we're going to and play that Crossing Illuminates, sliding it into the soul, drawing one card off of that's effect, and then using Elevira's skill to draw yet another card. So here we do need a card in the middle center column. I'm thinking we might just give up the Strega. Theoretically, we could call the Strega, see if we could get something a little bit better. Um, but what I think I might do here is I have a lot of Aphelios, so I'm just going to commit another one here. Uh, surely I'll see another one, right, guys? Uh, but we're going to go ahead and swing 21 at their 10k. Um, and then we're going to swing 33 at the Vanguard. Uh, drive check one. He's going to crit. Probably put the power here. Um, and then second, a crit. Oh, gosh. I'm so good at this game. Uh, anyways, we're going to go ahead and counterblast one, put the Ophelia back to the bottom of the deck. This is going to restand with another 15k power, um, and then we do have that double check. Now, if our opponent was going first and they were at grade 3, we could have multi-attacked uh, with the Willista, of course. But um, if they... And we would also get a 13k booster here, and this would be a 28k column all on its own. Um, but unfortunately, without that extra power, this is just hitting for 23, um, 33 with the trigger, and then this is hitting for 28, 38 with the trigger. Um, and then, of course, this skill, um, we're probably going to bounce the Ophelia just to make sure that they can't attack into it. And then during the end phase, we can EB3, retire this, and go ahead and just add back our gem here, um, because that's kind of what we need right now. Just add to our hand. Uh, their opponent's going to go. We definitely want to take maybe like two damage. Um, theoretically, we would like to keep the Franchette, but if she dies, that's totally fine. Um, maybe we guard another attack here. Um, but it looks like we are set to go into our turn four, which is going to be absolutely deadly. Um, ooh, kind of wish we had, you know, actually used, uh, gotten one more counter blast because we could have made things even more deadly. So we're going to go ahead and Persona Ride, draw a card. Um, I don't think we have a gem in our, uh, grip in our drop otherwise i would probably pitch the Valderosh to add it back uh but in this situation we don't need to do that we're just gonna go ahead and fire off the willista skill soul blasting the five in order to check the top um five which is an absolute kind of a big whiff here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the um the pg there and we're gonna l shuffle the four triggers that we got back into the deck. So what we're kind of looking for here is a Franchette so that we can actually bounce that PG back to our hand. If you see if that had been a Elementaria, um, we wouldn't have actually been able to um, you know, call anything other than triggers. We're gonna call the Strega, check top five. We're really looking for a Franchette here, but anything else would be just fine. Unfortunately, we did miss it, but we do have a, another Ophelia. So that can be definitely something solid. We're gonna have to leave that PG on board. Uh, theoretically, we could also use this to add back a Persona Ride, which might also be a very good play, uh, considering that we already have two Ophelias. So I think we might end up just doing that instead of the Ophelia here. Um, if you want to bank on the Franchette, I already have two out in this situation, so I probably wouldn't. Um, maybe just like get rid of the PG at this point, um, just to have that much stronger attackers. You really do have to kind of just decide 
whether you can finish things off here or not. But we still got some pretty big swings here. We got 21 um, at the Vanguard. We got 26, actually 36, um, and then swing for 40, uh, 43. Counter blast one, soul blast one. Uh, grade three ballista, restand this, drive check one, drive check two. Uh, got another PG, and then end of the battle, counter blast one, restand this, Strago goes back to the bottom of the deck. You shuffle it up a little bit, and then you've got 38 38 uh, without any triggers. All right, so that is going to do it for the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to do those YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.